Hello everybody and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. My name is EGC Fury and joining me tonight we have Ari, one of the best supports in our Division A bracket. Go ahead and tell the people about yourself there, Ari. Uh, my name is Ari. Thank you so much for introducing me. It is my first, no, it's one of my first few times casting, so it's an honor to be doing this with Rory, a very seasoned caster. Uh, today we have <laughs> a match old. between, <laughs> well, you are. Uh, we have a match between Misfit Island and Jimmy's Got a Gun. I'll let you introduce Blue Team. Well, uh, Misfit Island, definitely one of the biggest contenders in, in the Division C series. They've had a really strong run coming up into the playoffs, and here we have quarterfinals of the Nexus Gaming Series. So a uh, very strong season already for them. And then on the, uh, on the red side, we have Jimmy's Got a Gun. What do you think this first ban is going to be, actually? It's Sky Temple. Globals are a very high priority. Well, already a little banter down in the draft, uh, <laughs> the draft channel as well in the in the chat. So, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of worrying about the picks and a lot of uh, a lot <laughs> well, I would say pocket picks are, is probably the best term for it. Coming in uh, in this series is is probably the best thing we're gonna see. Both these teams have a lot of history playing together uh, and playing against each other, and a lot of these players play together outside of the the scrimmages and the matches themselves. So. Uh, they, they definitely know their strengths and weaknesses all around, and so that's where we're going to see that first Dahaka ban. It's, uh, it's kind of a comfort pick for Misfit Island, and so it's not a stranger to, uh, to the ban sequence for them. Oh, I see. So they know what's up. They know the strengths and weaknesses, so they're actually battling each other for this final spot, huh? And they know exactly what to do. This is very, very... Uh, I like these mind games. I wonder what's going to happen next. I do like banning out Dahaka, not simply because of the strength of the enemy team, I mean, well, enemy team in comparison to <laughs> to them, but uh, he's a really good global, and so is Zagara, actually, especially when she gets her Nidus network. She can really do a lot of split pushing uh, on the map and create a lot of map pressure, and eventually, at a certain point, you're going to have to decide, are you going to go deal with the Zagara, or are you going to go to the objective? So I really like that ban. Yeah, definitely. Uh, both teams coming into this with a plan. I, I like that. Uh, I like that they're so willing to get into this and really define their play styles in the long run. And so, this this is really going to be probably the best showing out of the Division C that we're going to see thus far. It's uh, you know quarterfinals, so they're both battling a spot for semifinals, which basically both teams have three fights left to go before taking that crown as Division C champions. So. Ultimately, they, they definitely know what, uh, like you said, what strengths and weaknesses are here for both teams. And so they're definitely going to be pulling out all stops. And I think that's where the Genji pickup is coming out. Just a really strong comfort pick for Jimmy's Got a Gun. They know how to exercise the strengths of Genji. And uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him roaming around trying to help their solo laner get a few ganks in the top lane and really push that early XP advantage. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting that... Uther was not picked up. Instead, we have a Vala and a Newbrag, both very strong heroes. Vala is a great ranged hero. She can combo a lot with maybe a Tassadar that's going to come out. Who knows? Uh, Newbrag is a great tank. He can just web wrap the Genji if the web wrap's not breaking out. And I was surprised that they didn't take the Uther away from uh, from Genji, but it looks like we have a Brightwing and a Murden picked up instead. So a very interesting dynamic that's going to happen. Brewing is very strong. She's a global. She brings Polly. Uh, depending on what the team comp is going to be like, she can really deal with spell damage and also physical damage. So I'm very curious to see what the rest of the team comp is going to be like on both sides. Well, having that Br that Brightwing investment and the Genji investment pretty early on, they're really, uh, I'm going to use the word invest here a third time, uh, they're really investing in the blow up. So they're going to have some sort of a, a healer to complement Brightwing for sure to just to add to that global presence because you, you want to have a strong split push and Brightwing definitely adds to that being able to come in at any moment. So uh, with Genji though, he doesn't do enough damage on his own to solidify kills. So you're going to mm -hmm. want somebody to soften up the, the backline. And so that's, that's where we're going to see probably a second support on the side of Jimmy's Got a Gun, as well as a second heavy damage dealer, maybe a KT. Definitely very strong pick on this map, and 
On the other side, though, the Vala and Anubarak, two very, very niche picks for Misfit Island. Very strong, and I'm not surprised to see Uther not coming into play so early. He was nerfed as of today, so not as strong uh, coming into this particular matchup, and it's something that both of these teams are going to have to kind of play around, these changes that happened to quite a few of the heroes this, uh, this just this morning. I honestly feel that Jimmy is definitely going to pick another healer. I'm just deciding what kind of healer because Brightwing, Brightwing can't really heal burst damage and she can't really heal the Genji who's such a mobile character. I wonder if a Rhaegar is going to be picked up by either Misfit or by uh, by Jimmy. We do see the Tassar ban, which I really like because that eliminates the hyper carry. Well, not entirely eliminates, but partially eliminates the hyper carry of Vala. Um, I wonder if Misfit is still going to go with the same kind of Tassadar strategy, except replacing with a Zarya. So they have like a second sort of tank. Uh, Zarya, in my opinion, isn't really a tank. She's more of uh, a bruiser, more like a ranged DPS even. Um, so I'm, I feel like maybe a Zarya and Rhaegar coming up from Misfit, but I could be wrong. Again, both these teams know the strength, the strength and weaknesses. Oh, Falstead Stu- Oh, I love this! I love this. Falstead Stukov. You know, I was just thinking this. You know, looking at the picks that they had already, Vala and Uberak, and then looking at their choices of bands, ETC and Zagara, who are so good at taking away the strengths of Stukov, which are zoning off sections of the map. And this this really does, I, I believe it did kind of tell that they were going to go for a Stukov and then some sort of a global. And I was hoping that it would be some sort of like a pseudo global like Illidan with Hunt, mm -hmm. but with the nerfs to uh, the Hunt with the cooldown uh, addition from going from 60 seconds to 100 seconds as of today, mm -hmm. Falstad definitely is a very strong choice. I think also if Genji is, let's say, Dragon Blading, if that's the ult that he does choose to go, Falstad depending on what alt fall side goes, he can provide a strong disengage to really save his teammates from the dive of the enemy team because you have the dive of a Genji, you have a Brightwing polymorph, um, who knows what alt Brightwing will take, maybe she'll take the displacement polymorph, uh, the displacement alt. We have a diving Sonya, we have an Abathur enabling all of this. More and more, I see the value of, of Falstad and his disengage for Misfit Island. Um, Stukov as well, depending on what alt he's going, like he can take the little the little meme arm, uh, or he he can take the flail. Meme arm, I think, is a bit riskier because you are only pushing one of the divers away, and that that means you can still get dived on by Genji, for example, if you're pushing away Sonya. So I personally would like flail to be seen, but I do really like the Arthas pick as well. Um, Especially for Muradin and Sonya, I see the Arth as being a definite annoyance. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be right back as we load into Sky Temple, so stay with us. And we are back into game number one, Sky Temple. This is Misfit Island's map choice, so we're going to start with their introduction. We have Ralston playing Vala, Jay Show playing Anubarak. We have Ellerin playing the Stukov. We have G Prime on, excuse me, <clears throat> on the Arthas, and then Cold Dam playing Falstad. Oh wait, could you say Falstad's name again? Cold Dam. <laughs> That was that was beautiful. That's probably better than the way he says it. Maybe, but on I like Jimmy's, it. <laughs> on Jimmy's Got a Gun, we have Captain Wedge playing Sonya, Afish playing Abathur, Murden being played by Big Ed Ro Egg Roll, uh, Ratwing being played by, is that Suen? S-U-L-N? I want to say Suen. And Wild Card played by Genji. All right, and we have so a little bit of... Uh... 
a little bit of early placement in the mid lane, uh, a little bit more prioritization on the vision on the side of Misfit Island, but Abathur getting a little bit of uh, presence with the mines as well, just trying to get a, a little bit more knowing as to what Misfit Island have up their sleeve at this early game. Definitely a little bit more of an advantage going into Misfit Island's pocket early game, just because Abathur having one less body on this giant map is uh, a little bit of a a little bit of a problem early game, so definitely want to get a lot of information and look for probably a pick uh, to try to happen on Sonya up in the top lane, as we have Ralston and Jay Show posturing up in the top lane. Yeah, we, we did see Sonya really get pushed in uh, by Ralston and Jay Show, but luckily the Genji rotated, uh, which was a really great move, and it's actually helping out the lane. Um, I'm not quite sure the lane matchups, who actually wins the lane. In terms of bot lane, we do have Falstead versus Brightwing. And I do think that in terms of the 1v1, Falstead does push Brightwing out. But Brightwing doesn't necessarily have to win the lane. He just doesn't have to lose the lane. So it's it's not as bad of a, a matchup right now anyway. Yeah, Brightwing definitely survives in that lane up until about level 7, where Falstead really gains a lot of damage abilities. That being said, though, in the top lane, Ralston's being forced out and forced to tap in the top lane as Sonya and Genji just put the hurt onto him. And so uh, I would look for a pretty early rotation onto that mid, uh, mid temple. And uh, we got a big collapse coming down onto Genji as well. Wildcard in a little bit of trouble in the mid lane and uh, a big slow coming down as well as Eleran's able to land, land that arm onto him. But... Uh, Ultimately, this this middle uh, middle shrine is going to go, or, or temple rather, is going to go the way of Misfit Island. Top, however, got a few cheeky shots off by Sonya in the top lane. Captain Wedge definitely doing everything he can to prioritize that top lane and not lose it overall. And uh, they're going to get a few more of these shots as well. I uh, There's so much value that's going to be happening with Abathur. In the early lane, it is going to feel... A bit rough for sure, but after comps, they usually strive in the late game when level 10 onward is happening. So I think I think Jimmy is actually going to be playing it a little bit safe until Abathur does get his 10s. Uh, and we actually see that in the gameplay happening up in the top shine. They're, they're kind of conceding. It's like, okay, yeah, you know, Misfit, you can have this. You can have these couple of points, but we're coming for you as soon as our Abathur gets his power boost. Yeah, definitely the power of Falstad uh, being shown here is Cold Dam's able to rotate down to the bottom lane and limit the amount of soak that Abathur is ultimately able to do in that split. And we have a one level lead on the side of Misfit Island on their map pick here early. I like the way that the lanes have been split by Misfit Island overall. They've definitely prioritized trying to limit the amount of XP that is able to be soaked by Abathur, as well as trying to have a strong kill group rotating between the mid and top lanes. And it's showing here in the top lane as Wildcard uh, is forced out and not able to soak really safely, already below half health. So he's going to have to uh, gonna have to take a little bit of a vacation here as that lane pushes a little further. And that's not really where you want to be this early in the game, already a level behind. Now... Would you say that Jimmy's Got a Gun has a more pit comp, more of a pit comp in comparison to Misfit Island? I think they're going to have an easier time securing kills. The damage of Vala and Falstad together, uh, being that Falstad can definitely spec into a lot of that burst, which we are seeing with that boomerang pickup at level 7. Mm -hmm. he, he definitely does have the capability to complement Vala and get those early picks. So I'm not surprised to see overall that Jimmy's Got a Gun's really having to play passive. This Abathur pickup is... It's an investment, and you got to really win the early game in terms of XP and understand that you're going to lose a lot of the structural advantage that comes with having full five bodies in the in the comp in the very early game. So uh, I do want to just say, though, that Abathur has done a decent job of getting some XP going, but overall, the mines have been rather ineffective, not really slowing down the rotations at all. And uh, we do have not really a mine build going in. It's more of a, uh, a full hat build. So trying to prioritize getting Genji in there to wreck face. Mm, I definitely think currently there's one of two ways that you can build out with her. One is the heal hat build and the other one is the DPS hat build. And I would think with a healer like Brightwing, you'd probably go a heal hat build with Abathur. But I think because Jimmy's Got a Gun is going for more of a pit comp, uh, we do see Brightwing actually going... Um, 
Z or Z rather for Americans. I'm Canadian. I'm sorry. Uh, a more more of a Z build rather than um, a passive build. And we do see Abathur going not for a heal hat build, but rather a DPS hat build because it really does seem that Jimmy's going more for a pick comp. They want the fights to not last that long. They want to be able to get kills, secure kills, and just win in that manner. Yeah, definitely. And already, I mean, we see just a ton of aggression as Tenzer on the horizon for uh, Misfit Island. And this bottom fort is going to be going down pre-temple uh, pre completing. And so that's going to be a lot of shots going down into the mid-temple as well. Probably going to be able to secure that one. And uh, we have Falstad flying up into the top lane. Cold M just doing a really, really good job of maintaining that soak, maintaining that pressure onto... Uh, an Abathur comp that's supposed to be winning this early game. But we have tens picked up and Wildcard forced to retreat as uh, a flailing arm is just gonna oh, destroy does him. Go down. And then we do have Sol no mana to be able to get out as well and uh, ultimately this is gonna be a collapse onto Jimmy's got a gun but it's not gonna net any kills. No one really in position to capitalize upon the cocoon or the burrow from J Show. I think what I think what Jimmy's got a gun really needs to do right now is to get 10 and then they have to fight immediately as soon as they get 10 before Misfit Island gets 13. That is, that's really the plan that they have to do right now. Not only that, I but they have to take it. They probably have to take two fights because one fight's not going to do it. That's going to get them back into the game, but they have to gain an advantage as well. So two fights, I think, would probably be do it. But unless there's camps and stuff available, one fight's just not going to be enough. Oh, oh, look at this. So, Misfit Island's actually... Oh, wait. Abathur's going to go down. Abathur goes down. But Misfit Island currently, they're very, very split. We have a solo Arthas bot lane. I think there's going to be a gank. Yeah, G-Prime's definitely in a lot of trouble. And a great body block by Wildcard is going to secure the kill on to G-Prime. Not enough survivability on that Arthas, regardless of Army of the Dead being popped. And uh, that's mm. a long cooldown. That's 80 seconds, and it's not going to be available. This is actually a really good pick on their part. They need to get just a couple more picks before 13 is picked up by Misfit. We do have Abathur spawning. Abathur's got his ultimate evolution. He's ready to hat. Uh, I think because Arthas was down, perhaps invading... Invading the left siege camp would have been more optimal, but we do see Gus being used to prevent the engage that Jimmy's got a gun really, really wanted. Yeah, extra not get, really getting any value, and and Brightwing Z was down at that time as well, so nothing that uh, Brightwing could have done to be able to come in. So I'm not in really uh, any position to help, but we have an invasion here by Misfit Island. The bottom uh, bottom siege is being taken, and J Show. Understanding that the gank is a potential, and right now we have the clone coming in. This sorry, sieges have already been picked up. A wild card going ham in the back is going to get a ton of value early game, but it's just not quite enough, and he's going to have to be forced to be back. A big leap by coming in by Captain Wedge, and uh, wild card's a little caught out, just uh, not taking quite the right path to be able to get away, and ultimately going to secure a kill by Coldam. I think the other thing is, is when that engage occurred, Sonya was actually still at her bruiser camp so she was a bit late to the fight i think perhaps delaying that engage or having the call to sonia to come down a lot earlier would have helped uh and maybe they could have taken that engage i want to say 5v5 because the clone was up you know i think that ultimately i that wasn't really a good engage i think uh at this point we're just having a little bit too much tilt and as i say that captain wedge taking a ton of damage big egg roll in a lot of trouble as well getting slowed by g prime that armor reduction from the roots just too much, and Son's going to be able to go down in the back line just uh, <laughs> playing the sixth man for Misfit Island, getting a bunch of XP, and they're already two levels ahead. This is not the position that an Abathur comp wants to be in, and Abathur's gaining a lot of value in terms of soak, but it's just not enough to keep them in this game at this point. They need to take two engagements post-13, one to gain, in, gain that advantage back, and then another to be able to get ahead. I honestly think that Abathur is being hindered a lot by Falstead. Whenever he's soaking lane, the Falstead is there to push it to... Wait, is Sonya going to die to the siege camp? No, no. <laughs> no, nah, it's Sonya. I, I, I thought for a moment that she would. Oh, an invade is happening. And that's going to be a kill on the Captain Wedge. Just no! not in a good spot post-Bruiser camp. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, but what I was saying, I definitely think Abathur's ability to soak is being hindered by false side because if you look at the stat screen, you see false side with 12,500 XP contribution and Abathur only at 4,800. He isn't really able to body soak at the moment because of the position of his team and the enemy team. So he really is being hindered from body soaking, from getting that, that XP, um, aside from, I guess, uh, hatting. But he does want his hat to be mostly on the Sony or the Genji as they're going for picks. Most definitely. And we do have uh, a three-level lead total, 16 to 13 advantage for Misfit Island, showing the strength of uh, being able to rotate around this map and really understanding the strengths that your comp has compared to the weaknesses of Jimmy's Got a Guns comp. I mean, I think, ultimately, Sonya has not been able to really get value. They, they picked it up as a jungler, definitely wanting to prioritize getting camps. Playing the macro game with Sonya is, is a huge benefit on this map because you're able to force bad decisions. But up to this point, all of their camps that they've gotten have just been to push the lanes back out because they've been out soaked to this point. That being said, though, a huge collapse onto Cold Dam in the bot lane, and Abathur's going to secure the kill onto Cold Dam. So their second kill going onto the board, but Sonya's having to back out before anything else can happen. I think this is exactly the kind of play that Jimmy's Got a Gun needs to have because by the time they do get 16, it's going to be so far off and 20 is going to be that much closer for Misfit Island. Um, they could technically wait for 16 for the next engage or they could try to get a pick and it looks like the reverse happens. Yep, just a little bit out of place as wild card in the bot lane is uh, Arthas, G Prime. Playing that uh, that Lich King is going to be able to secure another kill, and that's that's quite a few for him already. I mean, only only five kills to two, but ultimately G Prime really showing value, landing a great root and a great death coil as well in uh, on the back of that, and it's gonna it's gonna secure them another kill. And Captain Wedge forced to back off of the top lane. Do you think a risky boss play would be the right call right now? They need something to get back into this game. Also, did fly so, up there. Th there's no presence in the bot or mid lanes by Misfit Island. They're posturing to get this top keep. The temple's going to finish it out, but they want to capitalize even further. But that being said, Captain Wedge is going to get caught out, and his uh, <laughs> his spear's going to get canceled. Son coming in and uh, <laughs> getting every getting that push away. A G Prime missing a good route as well is going to allow for. Uh, Jimmy's got a gun to back away. Not really the engagement that either team wanted, but ultimately no trades on that side. And to answer your question, I think a boss play is exactly what's going to be going to be needed here. They they need mm -hmm. to be able to secure a win condition. Top lane's already down to just the keep, so temples aren't going to do anything this late in the game. They need to win a couple of team fights. They've got 16s now, so they're on even talent but, here. But they are down two talent, two talents in comparison. Well, they're down we, two we levels at the moment. Two two levels, but also two talents. There's no leap and there's no emerald wind for a couple more seconds. I think they have to do this fight, especially when uh, Mister Allen is taking some boss damage and they're split right now. Yeah, wild emerald card. wind is emerald wind is coming up soon. If Brian mean, is teleporting in, emerald wind is coming out. Oh, he gets interrupted. A little bit of a misplaced X strike on the side of Wildcard. A great jump in by uh, by Big Agro on the Murden though, does allow them mm -hmm. to contest for it, but just not great placement because of the cocoon that was able to get so much value, and and ultimately that's going to result in a boss push in the bottom lane. And this this keep on the bot lane is already open wide. They need to have a full defense here. This could be game. Twenties are going to come off the back of this, roots. and a great collapse. On to wild card. Captain Wedge just needs to take take notice that this is not a fight he can win solo. Thirty seconds, and hey. I think that's going to be enough for Miss hey, Finale. Hey, to take are game you off. saying that Sonya can't one v five with the power of Sonya? Is I, that what you're saying? I'm saying that. I am saying that. A great leap is going to you know cause Ralston Ralston to have to roll a ton away. Of damage. I mean that's that's just not enough. Reign of Vengeance just does a good job of mitigating that, and that's mm -hmm. enough damage to take game number one. I do think a Sonya into an Arthas could work. 
uh, a lot more effectively if you had a different level four talent. Uh, what is it called? A hurricane or, or something like that? Oh, Instead yeah. of going for uh, focus attack, especially, I'm not saying that build isn't bad. It is, it's a great build, like going war paint, going for focus attack and, and follow through. But against an Arthas, I think maybe altering the build a little bit to accommodate that would have helped her sustain, a, uh, self-sustain rather. Most definitely. That that fight could have been taken mu much differently. I think the Abathur pick was a bit... Uh, I'm, I'm going to say... Uh, it was a bit hopeful, uh, is the best word I can come up with to, to describe it. It was a bit hopeful. I think the other thing is, is going uh, the Zed build on Brightwing without being able to take that shield at level 7... Uh, really change the fight if you could get that extra shield on the sonya or the genji as they're popping off uh it could really make or break the team fight um but unfortunately you have to take cleanse on that talent here which is actually very very beneficial against uh, a root a stun another stun by vala the silencers all sorts of cc uh by misfits and i think in that case when you know that you have to take cleanse perhaps going um the more passive heal build would be the right call it would probably help out a lot more i'm not really quite sure what what could have been done absolutely well we'll find out what both these teams have in store for us as we load up map number two so stick with us we'll be right back
And we are back on map number two, Dragonshire, between Misfit Island and Jimmy's Got a Gun. Arya, tell me what you think of this last game. The, wait, the last game that just happened, or this game that's coming up? No, the last game that just happened. Honestly, I can see Jimmy's Got a Gun coming back with vengeance and just kicking Misfit's bum, to be honest. They know that there is a couple misplays they know what they have to do to win the next game they know their opponent very very well from scrims from games outside of scrims from the tournament itself i think they're gonna win this they have more to lose they really i can feel their vengeance in their veins coming through this monitor Absolutely. I, I completely agree. And already a Zagara ban by Misfit Island. They they banned Zagara first round as well last game, and I, I do believe that this is just a respect ban. They understand that Jimmy's Got a Gun has a Zagara cop in mind, and they want to be able to exercise it on some of these global-oriented bans, you know, or global-oriented maps. And so these bans are definitely uh, out of out of respect, really. And also, I just want to point out that uh, the player named A Fish is actually a fish. Just saying. Wait. Wait, what? We have a player named A Fish in, in the in the server on Jimmy's Got a Gun. Right. But what do you mean he's He's a actually fish. a fish. He just said so. In the chat he just said a fish. I'm I'm betting that he's actually a fish. Getting back to the band. He bands, plays though, really well for a fish. Yeah. He might have like extra appendages on his gills or some shit. We do have a Malfurion and a Diablo picked up, and I already feel as though something extremely spicy is about to happen. If you get that Diablo charge flip into a Malfruit, you're really securing the potential for a kill, especially if you have something as a follow-up, maybe a Greymane as a follow-up to that double CC, just that Greymane blow-up comp, and then at, uh, I think, 13 or 16, Greymane gets Executioner. He's going to be doing that much more damage to the rooted and stunned target by Mouth Diablo. Absolutely. That being said, though, Misfit Island really coming back with a strong set of counter picks. The Haka was first picked, which is just a really solid solo laner. That global presence always just... It's such hell to play against, really, on this map, which is so global-oriented, being able to rotate between the different shrines and and uh, try to get as much value as possible. And then Stukov and Vala, two heroes that just excel in denying areas of the map. That Bermuda Triangle of, bur of Brush between the mid and bot lanes is really where Stukov shines, being able to deny rotations and then Vala coming in with that massive amount of damage. This is really something that can put a kibosh on Diablo and Malfury and being able to exercise their strengths. So let's see what the second set of bands is going to come in. I think this is really going to determine the pacing of this next game. I definitely think having that Stukov does prevent that Diablo Malfurion combo, especially if you're going for someone like a Greymane. You know as soon as the Greymane goes into wolf form, he's going to be hindered by that Stukov silence. Uh, I think things are looking a little bit... Wait, Garrosh is, is allowed? Garrosh is allowed this week. Oh my goodness, all right. But uh, as I was saying, taking up the, the Dahaka, who in my opinion is the superior of all the globals, it does really limit you to what you could pick that is still a global, for example, a Falstad. I wouldn't be surprised to see Jimmy's Got a Gun go with a Falstad. They have a player that can play Falstad really, really well. Uh, that being said, I don't think that it's particularly in their comp so far. They would definitely need to pick a couple of really strong uh, heroes that, that complement Diablo and Malfurion really well. Greymane definitely comes to mind. KT is also one that comes to mind. Uh, but they'd have to get another another body up in the front to really protect Malfurion and KT in the long run. So, uh, but with a with a Garrosh ban and then ultimately an Asbanet ban, definitely both teams understand the strengths of each other. And I mean, Asbanet not normally a ban on this particular map. Uh, I, I I'm thinking that Misfit Island's done some research. I mean, Garrosh is a good overall ban right now because he's such a new hero. Not a lot of people know how to exactly work around a garage, um, or garage, however it is <laughs> you're supposed to enunciate his name. Um, I am very curious about these two picks that are going to be coming out. Absolutely. A Medivh. What? And a Jaina. 
All right. Well, I wanted I, heroes I, that I complimented. This. I got this. Listen, I, I freaking got this. You have a ley line into a ring of frost into a twilight dream. Throw in an apoc in there if you so desire. But if you get ley lined and, all, and you have your wombo combo up, you're screwed. That is that is a heck of a wombo. I gotta be honest though, they're investing so heavily into that combo working out that it, it has to pull off two or three kills every time, otherwise they're not gonna get value out of it. If it's only securing one kill and then they get collapsed upon once the, the combo's down, they're gonna lose every time. So they gotta get mm -hmm. something to help aid that push as soon as that combo's over. Something to really compliment them. Medivh's definitely they are gives very that very long ults as well. Exactly, exactly. So Look for uh, look for Misfit Island to really exercise that mobility of having the globals. I wouldn't be surprised of having a false stat picked up here. And uh, yep, here we go with the false stat, just trying to out rotate. Jimmy's got a gun ultimately, and I gotta be honest, as uh, as somebody who has streamed for a little while, I could say there are way too many men in the chat right now for you to use a word like desire. It's just not gonna go well. Wait, what? Desire? No, desire. 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 Yeah. You use the word desire. I don't think it's going to go too well with all the men in the oh chat. Oh my goodness. Okay. What did I say that was weird? Besides the word desire, what was the context? It's just that word. Just that word was the only oh, thing. No. Nazebo. All, right. all right. They're playing for a post-20 Wombo. That's that's awesome. You throw in Ravenous Spirit on top of that, and that's just too much. That's too much damage. The Stukov's not going to keep up with that. <laughs> Who do you think their solo laner is going to be? Is it Nazebo versus Dahaka? With a false head coming in from time to time for that game? I think so. I think Nazebo is their solo laner. But we'll find out as we get into map number two. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And we're in on map number two. Again, we have Misfit Island taking a very early 1-0 lead in this best of three series. And on that side, we have Ralston playing Vala. Jaysho playing the Dahaka. We have, excuse me, <coughs> as always, G-Prime on the Arthas. Cold Damn playing Falstad once again. <laughs> and then Ellerin on the Stuko. On Jimmy's Got a Gun, we have Captain Wedge playing Nazebo. Atfish on Medivh, Big Ed Roll playing Diablo. Wildcard playing Jaina, and I think I said his name wrong the last time. You said it was Soon or something? I think it's Soon. I'm not sure. Soon. I called him Soon. <laughs> I don't know. Soon on, Manf on Malfurion, or Soon on Malfurion, rather. We need to ask him do before we embarrass ourselves. <laughs> we do have a level 1 skirmish happening in mid lane, with a Mediv being just a pestering force. Yep, always scouting. A fish, very good at scouting. I love that. I can just call him a fish now, and I, it's it has a little comedic value. Definitely a lot of lane clear on the side of Jimmy's Got a Gun, so look for them to try to gain a little bit of an advantage rotating with that Medivh. I gotta say, though, I like what Misfit Island are doing in terms of their rotations, looking to try to match that rotation with the double global. And I think they have just a little bit of an edge unless Mediv gains a ton of value with his portals going between mid and bot. This is definitely yeah, going to be a battle for 10. Yeah, I definitely think with the Mediv portal, you're able to rotate a lot faster, and you're actually also preventing ganks because the Mediv is there to scout out. And you do have a lot of fragile characters like a Malfurion, a Jaina that are there on the rotation. So having the Medivh there, taking care of them, telling them, hey, don't go over there. They're, they're setting up a gank. It really prevents um, Jimmy's Got a Gun from getting ganks, really. Absolutely. And we have Jay Show and Captain Wedge going toe to toe up in the top lane. Jay Show definitely wins this lane early game up until about level 10. 
And that's when Nazebo really starts to pick up speed. And that's where we're going to see that uh, that particular lane get a little bit harder to handle for Dahaka. So that I think that before that happens, I think Cold Dam is going to look at uh, really trying to exercise that strength of Falstad and get a lot of rotational power. And uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see we go 3v4 up in the mid or bot lane here pretty shortly. Uh, Ellerin taking a little bit more time on Stukov getting that bottom shrine, and it's uh, it's going to delay. And uh, they had a, a little window to be able to potentially start casting on that Dragon Knight, but I don't think they would have got it. A fish is really good at getting in your face, and Ellerin getting collapsed upon. That combo from Jaina just too much to handle. Cold Dam doing the best he can to peel. G Prime coming in as well. Big Egg Rolls taking a ton of damage. The Diablo, not enough souls to be able to keep him alive this early in the game, and uh, it's going to be a full death timer for him this early as well. That's a really good uh, defensive route by Malfurion. I think some of their timers are a bit off. Like we saw Malfurion cast his route first in a different location, and then we had uh, Diablo cast his combo in a different location with uh, a Jaina W. I think that they're really able to sync up their cooldowns. So they're going to be able to secure a kill. Absolutely. That was, uh, I mean,. Uh, a lot of this comes down to how long these teams have been playing together. I think Misfit Island has a little bit more time under their belt as a full roster. And mm -hmm. that's going to be a kill on the Zebo in the top lane. Jay Show doing everything he can to win that lane, and he's really showing it. I missed that, un unfortunately, on the cast or uh, review board, observer, whatever you want to call it. But uh, a fish is going to go up there and catch some of that soak as well. I think Medivh ultimately is a little bit of a better uh, 1v1 up in the top lane against the Haka. So just with the, his mobility and his ability to poke. I think this is going to be a little bit of a lane swap here happening. I think right now the priority is, yes, to cap the objective, but to also get XP, get level 7. That's very beneficial for heroes like Medivh, for Vala, uh, for Stukov. Um, because getting the Dragonite isn't quite important because it is going to be a 3-minute Dragonite, a weak Dragonite. The maximum that you can do with such an early DK is probably get... Uh, two towers and a wall. I mean, XP is still XP because you are going to be getting XP from that DK and the damage he's doing, but I think the priority right now should be trying to really play for level 7 and level 10. Absolutely. Jisho doing a, a heck of a job bullying Captain Wedge out. And this is, uh, this is unfortunately Nazebo's weakness is going 1v1 in the lane against someone like the Haka who can also go back and come right back in with a full health bar, and that's going to be a great tongue yep. and ultimately a kill. I think if he doesn't have any um, essence, and if he's already kind of low on health, maybe you know Medivh came to help out for a gank or something. I think potentially, at, well, and it's late game. Okay, there's a lot of circumstances. In that particular scenario, I think Nazibo might be able to get a kill and win the top lane. But there. Are, that's a lot of conditions to have first uh, in order to beat uh, Jay Show's Dahaka. You do see Falsad flying in for this mid, but will he be able to get it before Jaina capped spot? He does secure it. Definitely a great move, understanding the uh, the pressure that you had in that uh, in that choke point down here next to the Siege Giants, and understanding that you had a little bit of a window to be able to get that Dragonite. Now, Stukov did not go with the enhanced range, uh, or sorry, the enhanced... Uh, area for lurking arm so it's going to be a smaller choke point that he's able to deny but already getting a ton of value zoning out wild card and so on mm -hmm. i just love the ability to place themselves appropriately on this particular map misfit island showing that strength of playing together for so long they know where their team's at at all times and how to capitalize and a huge route onto a fish as well and a good silence, but it's ultimately not going to net a kill. Just a couple of towers in the bot lane, and Cold Dam doing everything he can on that Dragonite to gain value. And I think uh, I think this is going to be it after the well. I think that's going to be calling it de calling it a day here on this first Dragonite. Do note that level ten is going to be picked up extremely soon within the next few seconds. Oh, it looks like it looks like Mister Allen is retreating with their tens. I thought perhaps they're going to make a play and really. Be aggressive, take their level 10, and just rub it in, <laughs> rub it in Jimmy's face. Yeah, I like the uh, I like the rotation though. Up in the mid lane, mm -hmm. they want to keep that pressure going at all times, and uh, a good amount of clear though by Wildcard in the mid lane is going to prevent that from overall happening. 
10's pretty close for... Jimmy's got a gun as well, so they need to take a fight here if they're really going to want to exercise that early advantage. And uh, it looks like both teams are just content picking up their Siege Giants. Uh, no, actually the Siege Giants aren't, aren't being picked up. Which oh. uh, honestly should be. It, it's still XP. It's still valuable XP. I think also perhaps getting that mid soak before rotating so quickly to the bot lane would have secured them 10 a lot faster. Well, got a, uh, a bruiser fight here in the bot lane. G Prime and Ellerin doing everything they can to secure those as well. But uh, this leaves mm -hmm. a 4v2 in the bot lane. And uh, ultimately they have to back off of that bruiser camp in the bot. 10s have been picked up. And we have that, the, those talents that are so well known for their combo capability, so I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of an engagement wanting to prevent that 13 advantage from being their next choke point. I think it's actually really difficult for Diablo... Well, actually, hold on. <laughs> the disengage. Here comes Leyline. Here comes the potential Wombo. Apoc? Great combo wild card, just getting a ton of value off of that ring. It's going to net them a kill onto Ralston. And a good, uh, a good portal as well is going to allow them to get away. That was an amazing Twilight Dream as well. <laughs> really, really good execution of the Wombo so far. Only one kill, but it was a great, great job as the Shrines are coming up. They asserted up. their dominance. They showed them what's up. They're like, hey, we're, we're, we're going to kick your butt. You just wait. It's a mind game at this point. G Prime <laughs> is quite low, but... Ah, a really good defensive route, and he escapes. What I was going to say earlier is, this map is a, a bit difficult for Diablo. It's not as though it's um, Infernal Shrines, for example, where there's a lot of choke points. There's a lot of fighting happening in relatively open spaces, so Diablo being able to really push someone against a wall, it's, it's a lot harder for a Diablo to be Diablo, really, on this map and get as much effectiveness from his kit. A great zombie wall up at the top lane, Captain Wedge, <laughs> yeah. backing off just barely, and that was, uh, that was perfect timing, because Jay Show just got stuck right in the middle of that, and that's a low health bar. That, that, the Haka's gonna do more than enough to be able to get that. And... Uh, this shrine is not gonna be picked up right. No, uh, not quite. I, 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 was, I was expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> Aphis just doing a good job of uh, scouting everything out with that extra vision that Medivh grabs. And uh, Bruiser's going to be pressuring the top lane as well. And the Zebo having a tough time with that top lane. And ultimately, we have a 13 to 12 advantage coming out here for Misfit Island. And uh, with those Bruisers pressuring the top lane, the Zebo's going to have a much harder time just to be able to deal with this. That being said, though, Bruisers for Jimmy's Got a Gun are being picked up in the bot lane, and that is an aggressive mm -hmm. bruiser. That's going to get value in the bot lane. That's a couple of towers down at least, unless Cold Dam could be able to do anything to, to really defend against this. A good collapse, think, though, in the bot lane. I think the other thing is, is it is disadvantageous when your lanes are getting really pushed in, but if your lanes are really pushed in, that makes it a lot easier to soak XP. So if Nazebo doesn't die here... Okay. And he okay. does. JK, JK. Way to jinx if it. If Nazebo doesn't die here, <laughs> uh, he would have been able to get that bruiser cam, get the, uh, the extra wave that's being pushed in on his side of the map, and get their team uh, a lot more securely, a lot safer, because he won't be out of position to be able to get that soak. Absolutely. Now, we do have a couple of quests being completed on the side of Misfit Island. We have the root quest for Arthas, as well as Season Marksman for Cold Dam being picked up here, uh, about 13, 14 uh, level, and an early Dragonite as well, about 10 minutes and 30 seconds in. This is going to be a pretty powerful one. A-Fish getting bunted away, not wanting any of his shit today. Cold Dam just done dealing with it. They want this series over 2-0 quick. Uh, check out Malfurion's level 1 quest stacking. Hello? That's a lot. What? 112? I know. Wow. I was like, hey girl, 113. <laughs> Good fun on the big egg roll as well. He's going to displace, a displace the Diablo. He's going to be able to get back into the thick of things though. And just a ton of value on the bot lane as uh, G Prime, Ellerin, and Ralston are getting uh, a ton of value gotten off these towers. And that's uh, that's the power of getting these level, or not level, but uh, these... Later DKs. Yeah, sorry. You know, yeah. ten, 10 minutes and 30 think, second DKs. I think, yes, all of the forts are down, but... As long as you don't lose a keep, it's not the end of the world. It's not ideal, but... Oh, oh, oh another wombo combo. I'm getting my pop. Here we go. Here we go. 
Great collapse. G Prime in a ton of trouble, but ultimately not enough damage. I don't think everybody was ready for that ley line. Wild card soon and a fish. Pretty low. Big egg roll taking a ton of damage as well from that root, and it's just uh, too much to deal with at this point. Their health points are not quite there. G Prime going a little deep for that kill. It's going to be a one for one trade. And uh, Captain Wedge is going to have to back out as well. No front line means that that entire back line is squishy and uh, ready to be killed. So everybody's just going to back away except their one for one. 16 talents have been picked up for Misfit Island, and this is a huge power spike for not only Falstad, but Vala as well. When you accent with that uh, with that Arthas, this is, this is where they really start to cascade things, and having every structure up to keeps just completely deleted, it, it, this is really where they want to get a lot of value. We do have a lot more survivability being picked up, though. We have two ice blocks, one from Nazebo, and one from Malfurion. And remember, Malfurion also has uh, the 25% slow whenever he moon fires. So I'm actually wondering if the way to play the engages is to do that hard engage uh, after the Medivh ley line and then see if it doesn't work out. You just play it back. You have the Jaina slow, you have Nazebo's uh, poison, you have Malfurion slow and his roots. I think if you're not going to be able to secure a couple of kills from your Wombo combo, they might be able to play back very slowly and eventually disengage. We do see a Ring of Frost going down. That was a great aggressive save... gust. Yeah, but it ultimately does not save Jaina. Yeah, Medivh trying to, see... to come in and help though too, and he gets mm -hmm. blown up as well. I wanted to say a little something a little bit controversial about that ley line bot lane. Okay, that was an EU ley line. It got. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think up to this point the real problem that we've seen. Oh, Did we got a good J flip show? on J Show. Dang. A really good flip. If there's a root, an amazing silence. But I think the root was actually on cooldown to secure that kill. Unable <laughs> to, sec to secure that kill rather. Yeah, J Show showing the power of Dahaka having three health bars, and that was just too much. <laughs> G Prime taking a lot of damage, cold dam as well. Flip. I think he's gonna go down. <gasps> great gust though. Leyline's down. Leyline has been used. Afish needs to portal out, and uh, a good combo from Jaina as well. This is gonna be a zero for zero at this point, but a lot of heroics used. Apox the only one alive at this point for Jimmy's got a gun, so they can't really do anything up to this point. This is where they have to back off reset. Sixteens have been taken. Shrines are active. This could be game. That middle keep is already at just a fraction of its health. That's basically a win condition at the moment here. In comparison, not a single fort has been taken. Wait, actually, no no damage on any of the forts except maybe two towers. Yeah, definitely a, a huge advantage going structurally in the way of Misfit Island. And like I said, they want to get 2-0. They want to uh, be able to advance with a strong fashion into mm -hmm. those semifinals. I think Jimmy's gonna have to do something really absurd and obnoxious right now before 20 is taken. Absolutely, they need to get some sort of an advantage back and get to 20 so that Nazebo really starts gaining that value. Post 20, Nazebo just wrecks they, they everybody. They are quite split though. We, we... And a big collapse. Ralston's gonna go down from a great combo from Medivh. A great silence as well. That Twilight Dream gaining a, getting a ton of value on G Prime, and a good portal in is going to cause Ellerin and G Prime to have to get back. But Ellerin's going to get caught out of the ley line. G Prime getting saved by it for now, but uh, that's the power of Stukov. Just so much burst healing. I think Ellerin's going to go down. Yep, Dang good Ring of Frost is going to secure two more kills. <laughs> this is exactly. Oh my goodness! This is exactly what Jimmy's got a gun needed. They need to I, get I was both. a bit worried at the beginning of that engage because Diablo was uh, in, in the top brush, kind of where Big Egg Roll is right now, which is also Diablo. So I thought it was it was going to be a split engage and they would get picked off, but that combo, the pick, it feels good, feels good. They're coming back with a vengeance, but their lanes are actually in quite a pickle. We have two camps in both lanes pestering their keeps. I don't think they've noticed the lanes pushing, and Nazebo's going to go back now to clear them out, that Nazebo's bottom and mid keep. But they got a Dragonite off of the back of this. 27 picked mm -hmm. up for Misfit Island. This could be a fight for the finish here. If they get a couple of structures, they get that 20 advantage back, Nazebo's finished his quest. 
this could really be a game on our hands. This uh, th this is kind of the, your, their only option for a turning point. If they lose a fight, the game's over. I mean, unfortunately, they're not going to be able to do much with this DK because Nazebo had been defending this whole time, and 20s haven't been picked up. And Misfit Island, they're, they've all respawned. I think they can't really use this DK for a win condition, i.e., you know, getting uh, a keep, but they can get some XP from the forts. Nazebo is joining now, so potentially a fight would happen. I would rather they wait for either a really good pick or level 20. That being said, the Wombo combo is almost up. Apoc just came up, and this is an engage. 20s have not, have not been picked up, and Afish is getting, taking a ton of damage. Icebox already popped by Sulm. Here's the combo, though. Ring of Frost goes down. Apoc following shortly, but it's really mistimed. Jaysho taking a ton of damage, but he's going to be able to return that with a second health pool. Medivh going down, as well as Sulm on the Malfurion. And An aggressive gust to deny their possible escape. This is a win. This is absolutely that a win. could have gone a really, really good Twilight Dream, but he actually got tongued by Dahaka, yeah, completely we... turning that fight around. That was a really, really good tongue. That's a game-altering tongue right there. Yeah, that is going to secure that bottom keep, and with 30, 40 seconds left on Jaina, the longest death timer, their most, obviously, their, their highest burst damage. I think this is going to be a keep. At least one more kill will secure it for sure. And Big Egg Rolls taking a ton of damage, not being able to get out. G-Prime taking a ton of damage as well. But uh, we have another APOC coming out. And Big Egg Rolls are going to be able to barely get out. But this is just a massive amount of damage on the core already. 50%, 40%. I think this is game. This is going to be a quick 2-0 by Misfit Island in the quarterfinals of the Nexus Gaming Series. Just a massive showing of force. They want that final spot, and they uh, they definitely earned for the semifinals so far. What do you think, Art? They, they definitely fought for their spot. I think both teams played extremely well. Um, Jimmy didn't just hand it over to them. I think, I think Misfits really had to struggle for it. They really had to bring out their big guns to earn that last spot, and they did a really, really good job. Um, look at the damage numbers in comparison, though. Nazebo... With 67, I mean, albeit that was versus just a Dehaka, but Nazebo did an insane amount of damage. And in comparison, um, we have the highest damage, as Fall said, with 37k in the team fight. So if you're looking at the team fight damage, you typically remove Nazebo because he is busy, you know, having his own problems with uh, that Dehaka 1v1 top lane. But the team fight damage is essentially Fall said with 37k and 33k Vala versus a 41k Jaina. So the team fight damage is a bit skewed in favor of just relying everything on Jaina versus having the fall set and the Vala. And I think having that high damage, so high solo damage uh, team fight Jaina is a bit of a problem because she does have longer cooldowns. Um, and I think there were some small misplays with, uh, with the combo, like really saving that route for the Diablo flip to, in order to secure the kill from the Jaina burst. I think that a good pick comp could have been made out of that, but we have Stukov just essentially, I, I mean, I want to say a word, but I think it would be inappropriate. Um, I don't know what the, the grown-up way to use this phrase is. Uh, really hinder, let's use the word hinder. Stukov really hindering that with the false set gust, with the Arthas roots, and just being generally annoying. Um... I really like that game. I really like witnessing those wombo combos, though, coming out from Jimmy. Absolutely. They they definitely did exercise it a couple of times earlier in the game. However, toward the end of the game, I think uh, the nerves of potentially losing 2-0 got to them a little bit, and so mm -hmm. they mistimed it. There was a, li a little bit of a lack of communication, you can see, in just some of the positioning. I think with a little bit more time and practice, this team could definitely make something. They have a lot of raw talent, and uh, I mm -hmm. definitely like how in the second game they really made a really strong showing. But uh, pulling these kind of comps out in, in this particular setting, I don't think was the right move. They should have gone something uh, a little bit more normal for them. You know, it was banned out, you know, their normal picks for their, their cliche mm -hmm. uh, fights, but, uh, you know, was Zagara being banned out, Asmo being banned out, but... Ultimately, they had a, long, uh, a really strong showing themselves as well, did some really good rotating, and had some really good team fights that showed their potential. So I look forward to seeing them in season number two. Yeah, they're going to be coming back with a vengeance. I, I guarantee that. Absolutely. Well, 
again, my name is EGC Fury. Thank you very much for joining me, Ari, and uh, this quarterfinals match between Misfit Island and Jimmy's Got a Gun. Again, Misfit Island taking this series 2-0. So definitely uh, a very strong showing from them, and we look forward to seeing them in the semifinals. Again, thank you, Ari, for joining me, and thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope everybody has a great rest of their day.